You are now listening to Vigilantes Radio, presented by the only one media group. This is the people's choice for quality interviews, celebrities and special guests. Hosted by Demetrius Dinny Reynolds. Call in to join the mix at 701-801-9813. For the complete archive of episodes, visit onlyonemediagroup.com and be sure to like us on Facebook at Vigilantes Radio. We welcome all. Enjoy the show. Gentlemen, please welcome your host, Demetrius Houdini Black Reynolds. Enjoy the show. Yo, there are over 20,000 of you guys on the lines with us today. Oh my goodness, you're going to break the internet, but no worries. We can house all of you guys. Now, I just want to tell you, expect even more. You know what you've achieved in the past. Now you can build on that experience and do more. You're familiar with the mistakes that you've made. Now you can learn from those mistakes and avoid repeating them over and over. You know what has worked well before. So build on that knowledge, expand it, apply it in new areas where it can create even more value. The possibilities for achievement have grown more numerous since you last considered them. Consider what you can do now to achieve those things and get to work on it. Remind yourself how great it feels to break new ground, to get good things done. Expect to feel that way again and then do the work to make it happen. Happen? Yeah. You made much progress. We know now you can make more. You've met many previous expectations. So now take this opportunity to expect even more. Oh, yeah. Take it from Dean. You're live in the mix. Let's get this started. Yo, it feels so good to be back with you guys once again. So one time, one time for my people who are indigos and starseeds, and two times for my people who are vegans. We are averaging over 34,000 plus listeners, and we've been at this for three solid years. I appreciate all you guys who've been rocking with the kid on this journey, and we're still growing, baby. It is all because of you, most definitely. We are the people who have dedicated their lives to music, spirituality, business, literature, art, movies, and research in every aspect. And we want to allow you an opportunity to tell your story. Man, we've had celebrities on the show from Grammy Award winning artists, nominees to actors, comedians, CEOs, technology geniuses, visual artists, from authors to professors and aliens. Or people who think they're aliens. It doesn't matter who you are or where you come from. Come on our show and talk to me. So check it out to book an interview or just to share a real cool story. Email me at the radio at only one media group.com. I'm passionate about what I do, just as passionate about what you do, and together, yes, together, we can get your voice heard by the people who should hear it. So let's create something incredible. And with that, hello out there, and welcome to another episode of our podcast, Vigilantes Radio. Thank you again, as always, for tuning in and being a part of our audience family. You know the number to dial. It's 701-801-9813 to connect with us or our guests. Or you can hop in and mix directly from my website, which is only one onemediagroup.com. Scroll over to the Vigilantes Radio tab and slap that go live button and you'll be right here live in the mix with all of us or in the chat room. So feel free to shoot over some questions to ask our guests while they are here. And as always, all episodes are available for free download. You can grab that from Spricker.com forward slash only one media group, iTunes, YouTube, the app called Podcast Addict, 
or over at our website and that goes for every single episode that we've ever aired i don't want to keep twenty thousand of you guys waiting any longer so let's go ahead and dive deep into this interview because i know you're not here for danny no you have to be here for our special guest this afternoon and you guessed it today's interview is the in asia interview and i'm your host Dini. yeah so Vigilantes Radio, our interviews go beyond the music, beyond the books and the movies and the businesses, and into the minds of the artists or people who create those marvelous aspirations. Oh my goodness, you're in for a treat today. Man, I fell in love with the music already. So from researching our special invited guests relentlessly, mining for details, watching, reading, listening to everything we can, we're like TMZ digging out secrets yeah our interviews are designed to bring out the best answers possible through thought-provoking questions that have some real substance well we're not like tmz worth a shot though anyway a sincere warm welcome to in asia uh for being on our show this afternoon we'll have an absolutely amazing time all the hats that she wears and her musical background point to being i'm sure she has a lot of incredible things to say here and i don't want to give away too much so with that let's go ahead and welcome her onto our show and asia you're now live in the mix with all of us how is it going and how are you feeling i am great thank you so much dini i'm so happy to be here and honored i love the show and um i'm really excited especially because it's release day so yes, is it really is. special for me. <laughs> Thank you. Definitely. Are you popping the champagne bottles or anything over there? After. I'd like to be sober while I talk to 20,000 people, say something yeah. intelligent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, they're all friends, so, you know, <laughs> you, you be as That's comfortable great. as possible. Yeah. You bet. Okay, yeah, so it is a big day for you. Um, what are your plans for the day? I mean, the, the record came out. I'm sure there's a lot of babies to kiss and, you know, things to, that, that you have to do, you know, to stay prominent on the Internet, as they say nowadays. Right. It's, you know, it's um, kind of crazy. Just, um, you know, just um, a lot of uh, social media and, um, you know, taking calls and, things like that it's a pretty it's a it's a pretty heavy day but it's it's gonna die down here pretty soon and then you just you know keep writing keep writing keep writing as they say that it you can't stop <laughs> definitely well we definitely want to thank you so much for your time you know you being here with us on this special day for you and I'm already looking forward to what you might have to say so from what I've learned, read, and researched, music is pretty much important to your life. But I suppose just because I've been doing my stalking, or I mean homework, <laughs> doesn't mean <laughs> the world is completely familiar with your full story. So from your own perspective, what is the music all about? Well, um, just to give you um, a bit of background, I come from the classical world. Um, I you know, played piano since I was six. I um, played flute um, later on, and then I went to um, conservatory for college, and I have a master's degree in music, a couple, and I have a doctorate in music, and I'm a professional conductor. That's what I did first before I started to compose. And then... Um, you know, kind of retreated into my hole a little bit and started to compose. And um, it's really interesting when you, when one comes from the classical world, uh, it's a very narrow path, and um, it's it's a everything is hard work. But classical music is just there's not a lot of exploration that's encouraged in it because you're nine times out of ten you're playing someone else's music and you're spending all of your time doing that and one day after you know 15 years of doing this as an adult I kind of woke up and said I don't even like this music anymore what am I doing so Mm. I decided to um, 
you know, uh, do it myself. And then from there, just started to explore, especially in the ele- in the electronic realm, just um, doing different things and then combining that classical voice that I had with more electronics and just having that come together. And I think um, after all of that and writing music for other people and other groups that those two voices the classical and the electronic came together in this album for me Mm -hmm. um so uh yeah it's you know um i don't know i've you know i've listened to a lot of your guests and i know there's a lot of rappers and um, a lot of people in the pop world and it's um it's a slightly um, different, uh, different path, and it's a different way of um, thinking about music. So it was yeah. a little bit of a mind change for me too, you know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I could definitely relate. Um, I played the trumpet for seven years, and then I woke up and said, "I don't want to do this anymore." <laughs> oh wow! Yeah. Well, you know what it's like. I mean, you get up and like you're, you know. You, you kill yourself to play someone else's music and all of a uh-huh. sudden you're like what am I doing this yeah. I don't even like it <laughs> yes I think it was the the scales and the, the, the rigorous training every morning that we had to do and so I was like nah I can't do this anymore <laughs> right exactly but you know what the training is great I mean there are a lot of people out there whose parents or mom, you know, or aunt, uncle, or grandparents made them play the piano, or made them play an instrument, and just made made them sit there and do it. And there's, and I think there's something to be said for the discipline in that, because that certainly has helped me kind of keep my life organized. So I, mm-hmm. I certainly wouldn't give it up. I just had a bit of a a windy path to where I am now. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So. Um... What's important to you, though, when you're composing your music, like that you feel represents you when you're you putting um, when you're composing? Well, you know, it's interesting. I've you know I've been thinking a lot about it, um, and what I find interesting is um, when one goes to write a song no matter or a composition whatever you want to call it you have to do it in the space of time and how we choose to fill that time as a songwriter or a composer is really important and what do I mean by that so when an artist goes to you know paint or draw something they have a canvas and that canvas is within a frame and that is their framework with which they work and um, a person can look at that and immediately grasp it and see the colors and point to the upper right hand corner and say that's blue and the middle is red and you know however it works but for a musician it's different you have to sit there and you have to listen to it. So you have to take up somebody's a valuable time and B it has to be interesting within your time frame. So I'm sure you and your listeners can relate to how many times have have you sat down to listen to a song and maybe the first minute is great. And then you're two and a half minutes in and you're bored to tears, Mm -hmm. right? Because, something wasn't right something you know something happened too soon maybe it didn't happen or maybe there wasn't enough change and every and everything that happens just happens over and over and over again so within that amount of time you know things have to develop and take on a life of their own in a very satisfying way and that to me is the most important thing a composer can do is just use that time that they've given themselves very wisely. Definitely. I can agree with that. Um, do you have like a definite style? Like I can listen to the work of um, Walter Murphy, who composes for Family Guy. Whenever he works on other projects, I can tell his style. Or uh, Jonathan Davis from Corn, when he writes and composes music for other bands, I could tell that's, you know, that's definitely his style and sound. 
Um, do you have right. a definite style and sound? I like to think so. I I usually say that my style is, you know, if Brian Eno and Philip Glass had a love child and then Dead Mouse was the Manny. Ah. That's kind of me. So there's, you know, it's ambient and there's a sound design quality, but I... Um, I'm a minimalist composer, so there's that kind of minimal vibe that you hear from someone like Philip Glass. Mm -hmm. And then I always have some kind of an EDM or a trip-hop element in there. So the, that kind of a combination. And I don't necessarily use a lot of percussion in my music, and I think a lot of um, composers do, and that's something I don't. I might use little shakers, and I yeah. might use a little bit of a kick, but I'm not overly heavy percussive sounding. Yeah, that's unique. Because, yeah, everything's yeah. pretty much, you know, layered with uh, all kind of drums and kits and all that, you know, percussion. Exactly. And I don't do that. It's not to say that there's not rhythm in it. I mean, I have a lot of um, arpeggiators and different... I use different effects and things to create a rhythm, but as far as, you know, like a kick and a snare and a clap and a hi-hat and all that kind of thing that I think a lot of people rely on, I, I stay away from that. Yeah. And that's probably my classical background. <laughs> Definitely. All right, speaking of that, taking a quick look at your resume, you are clearly an expert and genius and you have a lot of love for the many facets of the love of music from musical scoring to conducting you're a part of it all i would like to think that uh it would almost be impossible to balance all of this out and incorporate so many things that i you know get enough time to spend on the main part that i really love and want to do for the rest of my life um and I guess I can kind of relate to that because over here at Vigilantes Radio, you know, we're constantly up late writing show content and we're just outside of our music studio with all the recording capabilities all day. And sometimes I'd rather be there quite often, but we all know <laughs> careers and life can jump in the way quite quickly sometimes. And instead of where we want to be, we end up somewhere else out of obligation or self-motivation or a sense of responsibility. So truthfully, how do you find the time to balance all the things that you do? Um, you think you're incredibly organized or there's like, in fact, maybe two of you. I mean, <laughs> how, do you find, how do you find the time to do it all? And how do you make sure that the focus <laughs> gets applied to the right place? Well, first of all, you can't do everything at once all the time. And then yeah. I think you also have to make a decision like what's your real priority? Because I think if you try and be good at everything all the time, it's really hard. I mean, I can't do it. Maybe somebody else can. I haven't been able to do that. Um, so I don't – you know, I made the conscious decision that I didn't want to um, – uh, conduct anymore because I was on the road a lot and it was a mm. really hard job um, especially um, being a, a woman on the young side being a woman at all but yeah, um, yeah. As, you know and that was um, tough I remember I was conducting an orchestra and we were on the break and the principal cellist who's surrounded by women I mean everyone in his section's a woman and you know it's not like there aren't women in the orchestra he came up to me he's like wow you're really good for a girl <laughs> like, oh, okay and I know he meant it like nicely because they'd never had a woman you know they'd never had a female conducted there before and I just you know like thanks I feel like you said mm -hmm. that <laughs> it was pretty funny but um I don't know I just got tired of that life on the road and just all of that and then you know in, in every world it doesn't matter where you are if you're conductor or, or I'm sure if you're a hip hop artist or you're a DJ you're hustling for work Yeah. I mean if you're a freelance person and you're you know and you are an artist or you know you make commercials or you're trying to you know be get you know break into marketing or whatever it is that you do unless you're working for corporate America you're hustling 
I mean, there's no getting around it. It doesn't matter how successful you are. You know, it doesn't matter if whatever it is, you know, you're working really hard to get that next job. And I found that I just didn't want to work that hard. And it was a lot easier for me to commit myself to just um, writing music and um, trying to get my music out there than it was to um, conduct somebody else's music, Mm -hmm. in all honesty, you know? So um, I don't, I conduct um, a little bit, mostly um, opera and ballet, but that doesn't happen too often anymore because I'm just not in that world um, so much. But um, I certainly enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. I just, it's on the back burner at the moment. So right now um, when I'm planning, I'm, I'm an early bird. I get up at, you know, Especially if I'm under a deadline. If I'm not under a deadline, I cannot work. I can't produce anything. Nothing comes. The juice doesn't flow. I have to be under a deadline. Even if it's self-inflicted, I have to do it. So yeah. I'm up at you know 5:30 or 6, and then I can get a good six, seven hours in there. Um, I have a little girl, so if I'm up at five, and then I can. Um, take a little break and get her going and get her out the door and then I have from like 7 to 3 that's just solid that's just me while she's at school and I'm alone so I can get a good 7 hours you know pen to paper sitting in front of my um, computer and in front of you know all of my gear um, composing and that's you know yeah, exactly. I just treat it like a job. That's mm-hmm. that's all it is. It just is in my, it's just in my, you know, little studio, and not, you know, I don't have to drive. Oh yeah, how convenient. Oh man, and and you have great habits too. Well, you know, and that just comes from really a like being committed to doing it, really wanting to do it, and you know, kind of powering through the hard music isn't coming and just accept not having every note you write be perfect like get over it and move on to the next thing that's a big hurdle i think i don't know about you when when you are doing your thing but for me i have a tendency to dwell in the minutia of getting every little sound perfect and i have to get myself out of that and just kind of plod forward that's a big help just to keep going Definitely. So I I have to admit I was stalking your well. Let me rephrase. <laughs> I was doing extensive research on your social media, <laughs> and to me there seems to be some gaps here and there in the whole presence and the whole in the online world thing. And it actually did shock me a little. I'm supposed I'm just used to the opposite being bombarded by you know bands or rappers with new mail, new music, new merch, new this, new that tweet here tweet there oh, no. but I realized that you really haven't made that present yet online and it made me wonder if you felt the pressure to be more active in that capacity oh, oh I know I just <laughs> well first of all I feel like if I'm going to do be online I don't first of all I don't want to bombard people because I feel like when you go to someone's website it's all about me 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 look at me by myself by my merch Listen to this, do this, do that. And it's so frustrating. Um, What I'm trying to do online, and maybe I'm doing it a bit too slowly, but I'm trying to create a community. And if people are going to take the time to come visit my uh, website or go to my Facebook page or whatever it is, um, um, go to my YouTube channel, at least they're going to find out not just about my music, but about my interests and you know, kind of what makes me tick and what's important to me and just try to start, just try to build a community around that. And I'm really in no hurry. I think the importance, I mean, I realize how important all of that social media stuff is, but, you know, I think to post every, you know, meal that I have and to be online like that, it just, first of all, it doesn't interest me. I don't think Mm -hmm. it interests anybody else. And I feel like if they're just going to, you know, people are really busy and if they're going to take the time, I, you know, want them to listen to the music and then get something 
out there about me rather than um, constantly being bombarded because I think too many people do that and I just I don't yeah. want to get lost mm-hmm. yeah that's and, kind of the things we experience here where you know it's not that important to us anymore being on social media like documenting everything it's just not too important to me, to me anymore at least um, I, I take periods of breaks from you know Facebook or Twitter um, if I do it's usually about a podcast or something but my life no not so much exactly like these all these people who say that they work so hard and they do all this stuff but yet all they do is they're on social media how can you possibly be writing any music or writing any lyrics or doing or producing mm-hmm. if you're on social media I don't understand how that I I don't know how that works I have no idea yeah I'm with you <laughs> Because it's a huge distraction, you know, trying to watch timelines and, you know, write a show. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, how are you supposed to, you know, you're one person. How are you supposed to do all that? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, I've had help. I mean, I get help from time to time. Like, I get help. I've had help on the album. Um, I've gotten some really, um, so far I've gotten some really great press from that. And, um... I certainly couldn't do that on my own. And I also, don't you think it looks, I always think it looks strange if someone's trying to tell, if if there's an artist that's trying to tell somebody, um, wow, I'm really great, you have to listen to my music. Don't you, don't you find that odd? Yeah, sometimes, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) It's just strange, I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's probably why I sit in my hole and nobody knows who I am, because I'm just, busy writing music so that's and that's for me also um forgive me if i um meander but it's it's interesting i've been writing music for other people i've been doing it um i never in a million years thought i would ever do this on my own ever for me my own album like of my music and people who've heard it and you know have loved it and I found myself, um, people are like, where can I get your music? Can I get it on iTunes? Can I get it on Amazon? Are you on Spotify? Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, why on earth, why would you, why would I even do that? And then one day I just thought, I'm killing myself for other people. I'm doing, I'm writing all this music. People seem to really like it. What, why not try? Why not release something and just see what happens? Yeah. I'm just like you said in your, and you, you say in all of your um, openings, just, you know, you got to get out there and do it because no one's doing it for you. Yeah, yeah. That is true. And you really, you just answered the question to my, you just answered the question to, uh, well, I said that wrong. Get it together. Uh, you just answered the next question already, but here we are. The gears have shifted majorly, right? The yes. EP is out today, Five Mice. So other than, like, you having the feeling of, you know, putting your all of your energy into somebody else's work, or how we used to say all the time, you go to nine to five jobs working on somebody else's dreams while your dreams sit in the corner. So right. How, how did this EP, though, came to be, like, the idea, and, you know, choosing EDM, trance, uh, or ambient, you know, trip hop to be the genre you wanted to plant your feet in. Right. Well, you know, it's it's interesting because um, I don't, I'm not, a, I used to be a party girl and I am no longer Ooh. a party girl. I'm married and I have a uh-huh. baby and those things are done. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I don't miss it at all. God, uh, I don't know how I did it. Um, but anyway, you know, uh, it was so funny because my girlfriend, who we all have, we all had our babies kind of at the same time, and we were all friends. And oh, I guess it was maybe about a year ago. My girlfriend goes to Vegas on her own. I mean, she goes with a group of people, and they go to see like DJs, and they take like the whole weekend, and they do this whole Vegas thing. She's like, "Why don't you come with us?" And my husband's like, "Go, go have fun." So I'm like, "Okay." So. I'd never, I didn't, 
Vimi, I didn't know what a DJ was. I mean, my head was up my rear end. I was not in that world at all. So we go to Vegas, and, you know, we get there, and we've got this thing, you know, this DJ thing to go to. Okay, so we come out of the hotel. My girlfriends have put, who are very conservative, kind of soccer mommy-ish hot, but still, you know, soccer moms here in Los Angeles, they've got on these hoochie dresses, they've all taken off their wedding rings, and they are drunk, and they are partying like I've never seen people party, and I was in a state of shock, and they've all gone crazy for like, all this you know, just for this music and I was like, what on earth is happening? What's the DJ? Somebody explain this to me. Is he composing? Like, is this somebody else's music? Is he writing it? Is he doing it now? Like, and nobody could answer me. <laughs> nobody could answer, like, what was happening musically. And my music hat is on, and I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> so, a couple of, but, I mean, fun as hell. I'm telling you, I had a great time. Um, so, I guess it was about a mm, couple months later, there was that, I don't know if you're familiar with Masterclass. Have you heard of that? Like, they've got all those really famous mm-hmm. people who give kind of Masterclass classes. Serena Williams on tennis and Frank Geary about architecture and all of that. Well, Dead Mouse has a class. Oh. And I guess he's a D. Like, I didn't know even who he was, dude. I had no idea. So, okay, you must be pretty good. So I took this class. It's a series. Anybody can go um, go and take it. It's not expensive at all, and it's a series of videos. And But um, he just talks about his process, what it is, how he does it, how, you know, how he creates a song, how he mixes, how he masters, how he, um, re- you know, how he creates a remix the whole gamut and he's incredibly honest his um the camera's on him and you watch him actually create um create um a piece of music and he can't use a keyboard he never learned how to play the piano and that intimidates him so he does everything by drawing it with a mouth and to be that successful of a guy and not to be able to you know and you're a musician and you don't you're you can't even use a keyboard but he was totally open to sharing that with the world i was really impressed and just how he thinks about music and you know how he uses eqs how he uses filters how he uses reverb how he paces his how he paces his music all of that. He was really honest. And I thought, wow, that was really amazing. And he uh, gave, and he still is, if you take the class, you can. he gives stems for um, a piece of his called Snow Cone. So mm-hmm. all those stems are um, royalty-free, and you can take them and do whatever you want with them. So that was in, like, January, and end of January, and then... Um, Around that same time, I found out about this thing called the RPM 28-Day Challenge. Have you heard of that? I have it. It's a, um, it's a, apparently uh, February is usually the time when um, a lot of different groups throw up these challenges, create an album in, you know, during the month of February in 28 days. So this particular one that I found, um, it was 10 songs or 35 minutes, and you had to write and mix and master it with your cover art, everything done, ready to go, ready to be released in 28 days. Mm. So since I need a deadline, I thought, oh, wow, this is a really good challenge. So what I did was I took five stems from Snow Cone, and then I used them in... Five Mice, hence the name Five Mice, and I created five um, five different songs, but essentially it's just one, you know, 35-minute through-composed piece 
you know, one piece of music that's supposed to be listened to from beginning to end, kind of Brian Eno-esque, you know, just a big, long piece of music. Um, and, um, you know, I took, I took some of his ideas. Obviously, I took, you know, my ideas and my musical, um, all the musical training I've had, and then, you know, the things I learned from him because I thought he was, you know, really insightful and uh, put that together. And that's how Five Mice was born. That's, it's kind of a roundabout way, but that's kind of exactly how it happened. Okay. So is your music though, just like, sometimes people make music for regions that they're from or regions that they feel like the music will do better in. Um, Would you say in your, in your opinion, is Five Mice made, you know, for the Los Angeles region or is it potentially suited better for a different scene somewhere else? I don't know. Since I don't really go, since I'm pretty, I don't really hit the scene too much, so I kind of don't know what's going on um, here, which is pretty sad. Um, And then, you know, the the ambient world is pretty, um, they come from all over, and they're very devout. If you like ambient, drone, music, um, you are kind of it doesn't matter, you know, where you come from, which I find is very interesting. They're kind of everywhere. And there, you know, there aren't necessarily a ton of fans, but there are enough that, um, you know, you, they can create um, quite a buzz uh, for people. So I know there are ambient music fans here in L.A., but I didn't make it specifically for Los Angeles. It was just for the ambient, you know, Community and ambi music for um, maybe some of your listeners really aren't familiar with that term. Mm-hmm. The music is more more has an emphasis on tone and atmosphere than like melody. There's usually not a vocal. There are no lyrics. Um, it's just supposed to be. You can. It's very interesting sonically, but it doesn't. But it's something that can be played in the background. It doesn't necessarily have to be paid attention to, like a pop song or, you know, like a hard rock song or rap song or something where you want to pay attention to lyrics. It's it's not music like that, and it's not supposed to be listened to like that either. Definitely. Just something different, yeah. Oh, yeah. So when, when you're producing, you know, the tracks for this um, project, how involved did you get into, like, the nitty-gritty, you know, of the finished product? Were you there from start to finish, or, you know, were you in there, you know... Did you do it yourself, first of all? Yes, I did. Um, awesome. I did everything. I mean, I recorded, I created every sound. Every sound is... Um, handmade bespoke wow um i created every and if i have an instrument like i have a great piano here but then i you know i prepare it i do i do different things to the instrument to make it sound um different i detune it a little bit just you know everything i do i just try to make it sound just a little bit different and you know i'm in there i'm doing i'm putting all the filters on it i'm doing you know, doing all of that kind of thing, and I'm I, I'm obviously mixing it myself. I do have somebody to I have um, his name is Damon Tedesco, who's um, my he masters um, most of my music, um, and um, he's a big guy in town. He's a recording and mastering engineer, and um, he works with a lot of composers and artists on the film side, and um, Recently, he just um, helped out on Planet of the Apes and Spider-Man. He's a big guy, and uh, he has incredible ears, and I know that if I can get past him, I usually mix it, and then I send it to him thinking he's going to remix it, but I'm like, I'm not sure about this, how this sounds, what do you think? And he's like, Leanna, it sounds great. It sounds great. Just let, let me just 
get it louder and then he, I don't know what he does to it he puts some magic fairy dust on it and then it just sparkles I'm like how do you do that and of course he won't tell me but um, <laughs> he, he does something I don't know what it is but I get it probably 95% there and then he puts he just puts a little touch on it doesn't take him long and that's it and then I have um, um, uh, in my studio I have um, a guy by the name of Ryan Ushida and um, Mark Nagata of Vision Daw, and I don't know if people are really familiar with um, having um, an external um, kind of a workstation, but I have um, a couple of um, PCs that were um, built for me that have a lot of um, instruments that I created and sound libraries and you know, things like that, and so they kind of build that, and they um, manage and take care of all of that for me. I mean, they're not here every day, but if I need some help, something isn't working, or I'm going to add some gear or do something like that, then they're there to help me. But other than that, it's just little old me. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And I think everybody should be able to mix their own stuff. You should not have to hire a producer to produce your own music. Mm -hmm. Get over that. You mm -hmm. can do it. If you can create it and you can sing it or you can write it, you, you've got the ears. I'm telling you, those of you who do this and are listening to me, you can produce your own tracks. I don't care what anybody says. It might take you a while to learn how to do it, but you can do it. And all the money you spend going into a studio and recording, take that money and invest it in your own studio at home. It's going to sound just as good yes. once you learn how to use the gear I'm I'm convinced I think this myth of going into a studio nowadays because they're using the exact same gear I'm using that most composers and most you know home recording artists are using in um, in their home in their studios mm -hmm. It's exactly the same. Nothing has changed. Everyone's using the same stuff, the same plugin, the same DAW. Everyone's using the same equipment. I mean, obviously, they're using it differently, so get in there and learn how to use it. But I'm not a believer of spending all your pennies and going in to record with somebody who you're not very familiar with and then not having a great, um, not having a great product at the end, or, end of it after you spent all that money. Definitely. Mm-hmm. I say I totally learn it, agree. do it yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? Mm hmm Totally agree with that one. Guys, listen. She, she gave you some jewels. You because I'm it. telling you, I, I was always nervous about it because I came from a classical world. And for us, when you record, you just record it. And, you, you know, and the most important thing is having a good mic and making sure the room where you're recording it is nice and then hoping they don't, you know, make too many mistakes. Right? Mm -hmm. Because you're not right. doing anything to the sound, really. So going on the other side of it and really working, like, I need to put a filter. I need to put an EQ. What can I do to this? Can I put some delay? Like, what am I supposed to do to make it sound like something? Right? right? You just have to get in there and learn it. And, you know, it's... It's a lot easier than you think if you can get yourself out of that, I can't do it, and get yourself into the, of course I can do it. If that guy can do it, I can do it. Mm -hmm. Just change your mindset, and you can do it. And it's not as hard as you think, because the gear now is so easy to use and so friendly. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So when, when it comes to the, the aspect of time and how much of it you have and can disperse amongst, you know, the many hats that you wear um, and jobs in the industry that you take on, when something like Five Mice continues to gain attention, in theory, it might begin to take up more of your time as well. And of course, we all want that, especially if we're, you know, we're doing our own thing now. Uh, and in general, with you being involved in so many pieces of the entire musical pie, it almost seems like when one of those elements truly take off that maybe the others one other the others will get left behind 
I'm not quite sure, though. Again, I suppose it all comes down to balance. And I've already asked you about that earlier, but I suppose what I want to know now this time around is what truly defines the guidelines between where your focus goes to now? Well, I think the key is that all pieces of your musical puzzle work together. And for me, before I kind of made the sea change into, you know, composing, I was, or bringing, I should say, bringing my voice together as one. I was writing, um, you mentioned earlier, I'm a film composer and I write for TV as well. That was kind of one voice for me. And then I would go and I would conduct, you know, opera. I would, you know, Puccini. That's another voice. And then I would go and I would, um, you know, write uh, for my publisher and I'd write an orchestra piece that was a typical kind of modern orchestra work and I would do that and I was kind of on a little bit of a treadmill because nothing I was going in different directions and I think I just had to take a step back and say everything everything needs to work together so if I'm going to conduct it has to be my music or something that I'm really interested in that will help my voice if I'm going to write orchestral music, now I write music with electronics that is more my voice so that the two things aren't so disparate, so that they actually they come together. So with five mice, theoretically, you could, because there are parts and they're coming because I have a, not only do I have electronics, but I have a small chamber ensemble. So flute and clarinet and um, um, oboes and bassoons and then I have piano and like I said a little bit of percussion but not much but mostly the woodwind and piano that could be played live with the electronics so if there were people out there that had you know um, like a chamber group like they're at school or they're in college or they play in an orchestra or an ensemble or they're in a band and they're looking to do something different this is something they could do that's a little bit um different for them and um and it still you know pushes my music forward which is the whole point is to bring everything together to work together because otherwise right. you know you just kind of run in place mm -hmm. um i want ask you what is your favorite song off the record um, but what I will ask you about is what about the production from your new music that stands out to you hmm. well tell me tell me tell me what you mean by production um, <laughs> as far as like <laughs> the music basically the uh, the structure of the music oh well I had to, we talked about earlier in the segment about time and how we have to use time wisely. Mm -hmm. And I think that when people sit down to write music or write a song or whatever it is that they're doing, they don't think about the time element. Um, you know, a song structure is incredibly helpful because you have a verse and you have a chorus and the chorus comes back and then you have a bridge and all of that is there to help you pace your song and to help it, you know, be a satisfying three and a half minutes, however long it is. But if you don't use a song form, you have to use some other kind of a form. And I think that's where my classical hat, you know, kind of kicks in. So I create um, a kind of a time template. I know if I realize, first thing I do is set up how long something's going to be so, for example, um, I think my favorite song of the album is called Song 4, and it's, um, it's about nine minutes. And what I did was in that nine minutes, I created um, kind of hit points for me, um, where things were going to come in. Nothing is arbitrary. Everything is there on a time, you know, like there's a kick that comes in about I don't know, five or six minutes in, that's there, that's not um, by accident. I planned that and then I kind of worked backwards and how was I going to, you know, work up to when that came, when that musical element entered 
how was I going to develop the music from the beginning and develop it throughout the entire song? How does that work? Where do those changes come in as far as time so that everything, you know, is satisfying when you listen to it? That's real. That's first and foremost for me, always how am I going to use my time musically is the most important thing. So I try and set up a kind of a template and then I just fit those pieces of the puzzle in. Definitely. And how many so songs are... Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no. No, no. It's just all... That, that's how I usually write everything. I try to create my own template for when things are going to happen, you know, and just try to work it out the best I can that way. Definitely. And, and how many songs are on the EP? Uh, there are five. And five. Um, on the EP, I've also included the through composed... Um, without the breaks, just to through compose the whole complete version. If anyone's okay. interested in just yeah. having it play, because I broke it up into five songs, and um, for the five stems of um, that I used from Snow Cone, and um, each song has a one element from Snow Cone that I used, and also when I got an element from him. Um, when I got a, the, when I chose the stem, um, I was very specific about um, what I did to it. I would slow it down, I would speed it up, I'd cut it up, I turn it into, I would turn a pad into a beat or a, a beat into kind of a washy pad, or I would detune it. I would, you know, kind of make it faster. I'd make it a different rhythm, you know. So I did all kinds of things to it, so it's almost unrecognizable. Mm-hmm. Which is kind of my thing too, is just to take something and turn it around. That's another thing I don't understand, a remix. Uh-huh. I don't get it. And I'll tell you why. Somebody, if they're gonna do a remix, like take, take that music and turn it into something else. Mm-hmm. Do something different. I mean, if I'm gonna hear a remix and it's just going to just be louder or they're just going to take out one element or they're just going to add an extra kick or they're just going to add an extra vocal that's not doing much to me no. that's just my yeah. opinion I want to hear for me a remix I want to hear something totally different like totally recreate something Yeah. that's my take and that's kind of what I do I do, also, I do something I call them recreations on my SoundCloud page and on my website, I've done some. I've done a, um, a Gaga recreation and I've done a Taylor Swift recreation. They are not for sale, so totally legal. Um, but I've taken stems from um, stems that they've made available, and then I um, do my thing to them. So they're totally unlike. There are L. You know there are kind of bits and pieces of the original you can certainly recognize certain things but for the most part it's a whole different um, feel and take on the music which I find very interesting definitely and we've noticed that there aren't really any titles what's the purpose for that or uh, or the story behind why you chose just to have them as song one song two song three so on and so forth Right. Well, I did it because, you know, it wasn't meant to be separate songs in the first place. Ah. Um, they were, it's just meant to, the whole album is just meant to be heard in one sitting. But um, that's a little impractical. So I cut it up into how I, you know, created them. And then from there, I'm creating kind of mini versions of those so people can get, um, a taste without having to sit and listen to, you know, nine minutes is long, and I understand that. And a lot of people like that, but a lot of people are maybe a little, um, I don't want to say turned off, but that's not the first thing they want to hear is nine minutes. So I've created, you know, kind of um, three-minute um, edits that are great for um, radio or um, different elements of, you know, different um uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, like different podcasts and different. Um, yeah. So that that's what's been getting reviews or the um, radio edits. 
because people don't want to sit and listen to nine minutes, which I totally understand. That's you know, it's, that's a different purpose. So that's why that's why I did that. Okay, I was very tempted to play the nine minute track. Well, here. you're sweet. Thank you. <laughs> All right, we're here, so. <laughs> right? All right. Yeah, so this concludes our interview segment here. This is the Vigilantes Radio Soapbox. Is there anything at all that you would like to add in conclusion, like where can people connect with you online, uh, websites, all that good stuff? Yeah, thank you. So first and foremost, the album is out today. You can get it. It's called Anasia 5 Mice, um, A-N-A-S-I-A of the number five mice and a sea of five mice it's on itunes amazon um google play uh you name beatport um pandora spotify you name it it's out there however if everyone listening today if you end up buying the album on itunes um Shoot me an email, and you can do that on my website, anasia, anasia.com. Um, if you go there and drop me a line, um, I have a special song only for the listeners of Vigilante Radio that I will give you as a download for free. Nobody else will get this. Only the listeners of this fabulous show and for um, Dini. Awesome. So, yeah, it's for you. Absolutely, you're so all, you're so great, and thanks for taking the time. And hunting you, you know, you can stalk me anytime you want. It's never a problem. Oh, no problem. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> she, you heard it. She gave me the permission. So, <laughs> all right. So after the music break, it'll be time for our usual t- tradition. It is called the hot seat, and our fans love this part of this segment. And of course, along with the actual interview, but the audience get to hear either some good old singing poems, inspirational speeches, spoken word, freestyle rap, recite lyrics, jokes, stories, live instruments from our special guests. Well, you never know what these creative minds and vessels were produced in the spotlight. And today we're in for a treat from Anasia. She actually sent us an improv just for the show. So we'll play that right after the music break. But for now, here is song four. This is mental music for you. So go ahead, kick back, fix you another cup of tea, and check this out.
Oh my, that was wonderful. That was wonderful. Very, very comfortable. comfortable. Definitely in the genre of trance and ambience. It takes you there in your mind if you uh, allow it to, right? Yeah, so work for you. Do you want life to work for you? If so, then you must work for you, all right? Yeah. Wishing, hoping, sitting around, waiting for good things to arrive in your life doesn't work well. What does work well is when you do the work to bring about the kind of life that you desire. The more responsibility you take for your own life, the more satisfied you will be with the way life unfolds for you. The more you invest your time, effort, imagination, creativity, and life, the richer your life will be. It might sometimes seem that a free ride, no effort, no responsibility would be nice. Oh yeah, it would. But that's not the case at all. What truly makes life good is knowing you're deeply involved in making your life good. What brings real fulfillment is when you are working with commitment working with persistence to create that fulfillment give up any fantasy of fairy tale life simply drop it into your lap for even if it did happen that way you wouldn't like it all that much I don't know you may now that I think about it I might not just kidding the very best life for you is really the life that you work to create for yourself Take it from Danny. So let's go ahead and invite Anaisia back on. Anna C, I'm sorry. Back on and uh, do our final words here. And that was awesome. Song four and uh, the improv piece that we played. That was awesome. Thank you so much. Definitely. Definitely. I appreciate that. It goes with your whole vibe, man. You got to (laughs) just take it. Yes. Oh, yeah, the music, it definitely puts you there where, you know, I don't know. I don't see how you can be, like, in a negative atmosphere listening to your type of music. I mean, there's absolutely Thank you. negative that's, about it. Right. That's that's the whole point is, um, you know, positivity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and it's interesting. I don't know if any of your guests are um, into, um, you know, I know they're into music, but it's um, really interesting if they um, if they're interested in taking the time and going to, you know, if they have a favorite song and going and searching for them. And it's fascinating to see how many stems um, that song has and uh, how things are layered, where they are, what's where. It's a great study into how um, a great song or a not so great song is made. And, um, if, you know, especially if you're, if they're interested in learning about production and not just writing a song or not just singing a song or not just writing lyrics, but actually how to put the whole thing together. Listening to somebody else's stems is like a music lesson in and of itself. So I highly recommend that. Definitely. Okay. All right, guys. Um, we definitely want to thank Anna Sia for joining us this afternoon. 
thank you, my Vigilantes family, as always, for checking out my podcast over here at Vigilantes Radio. All episodes are available for free download, and you can grab it from either Spricker.com forward slash only one media group, iTunes, YouTube, the app called Podcast Addict, or our website, which is only one media group.com. And that goes for every single show that we've ever aired. If you'd like to request music or send something for us to play, email it to the radio at only one media group.com. Here's my disclaimer we are drummer free, we do not judge, and we absolutely do not base our opinions on hearsay but facts alone. And actually, you can scratch all of that because all of my opinions are always right. That's the bottom line. This is my show, something you got to deal with. Nah, just kidding. On behalf of myself, Danny Mussolini, I appreciate you guys for tuning in either afterwards or live with us. Spread the word because sharing is caring. And also, special thanks to our guests for joining us. We stepped up our game just for you guys and our guests to make sure you have the best experience here on our show. Be sure to connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, YouTube, Tumblr. We are all over. Just connect with us and we do follow back. Okay, well, just remember to be yourself and be absolutely freaking great at just doing that. Peace. And now listening to Vigilantes Radio, the people's choice for quality interviews, art, music, and hot topics. Hosted by Demetrius Houdini Black Reynolds of the duo No Longer The Hero. All episodes of this podcast are available for free download at www.onlyonemediagroup.com. This is a seventh sign regime, Rebirth Worldwide Syndicate exclusive.